many first bits. Okay. So today I have another video for you guys, and this is me reacting to old videos of pre-saved Amanda. And also some of these videos are like right after I got saved. I'm making this video not only to like shed a light on like what I was doing, why it was bad, and obviously what God has brought me from, but also to encourage you guys if you guys are doing any of this stuff. Um, to repent and to seek Christ. Looking back, I can see definitely that God has brought me from a very different Amanda. She, I watch these videos and I'm like, who are you? Because I am not this person anymore and I had to really change. I didn't change me, God changed me, um, you know, but it was a process and it took some time, but I'm glad to say that like I'm here now and like God, I'm still working in progress by like, by every means I'm not perfect, but, God is still like so gracious and has been, like I said, very patient, like very patient. And you'll see why. Leave a comment down below <laughs> and tell me what God has brought you from and encourage others. I hope you guys enjoy and let's just jump in. All right, so the very first video is actually just like a live photo and I just wanna quickly say, um, I'm blocking out some people because they might not want to be. <clears throat> in the video but this is me drinking i was very very like i was a lightweight by all means like i <laughs> like i couldn't drink that much but i did like to drink and it led to a bunch of awful things that i did so i just want to say this is me right after i got saved um i want to say i got saved early 2018 late 2017 possibly but even then, like, I messed up so badly, even afterwards, like, really badly. Um, so, like I said, it was a learning process for me. I definitely hurt a lot of people that I loved along the way. Part of the reason why is because I used to drink a lot. But one of the verses that really, really helped me was, Stay sober of mind, for the devil is like a prowling lion waiting for someone to devour and the reason why that really stuck with me was because like drinking never like it didn't seem wrong at the time but then when I would look back I could see that there were definitely times when this the enemy would try to attack and also you know because I wasn't fully sober I couldn't make rational decisions and also like I was led away by my own desires and tempted and sinned and because of that like it gave open doors to the enemy to come into my life and also alcohol is a depressant like it makes you feel like depressed I was so low my self-esteem was really really low I hated myself I hated the way that I looked and like that was really just like goes to show like how much these substances can affect you and <clears throat> and I do want to say that like it wasn't just like this substance it was another plant and I'm not gonna say what plant because of the community guidelines but I think you know what plant I'm talking about and like I would eat that I would eat brownies that had that plant in it or I'm not not brownies I'm sorry but like you know like uh, cookies and uh, other chocolates and stuff and it's just not okay guys it just not leave you sober of mind it gives the enemy a way to like it opens like a doorway and then you just start to listen to the enemy and you, it's not good and God does not want that to happen he cares for you he loves you I used to run to drink as a coping mechanism and because of that I was kind of not putting my hope in Christ to take care of my anxieties but he says cast your anxieties onto him for he cares for you so make sure that you put all of your worries all of your anxieties when you're feeling down when you're feeling low when you're feeling happy doesn't matter talk to God about it because he should be the one that you're running to not to a bottle The next video, this video here is me at a like a club. It was like a pub, then it became a club. Yeah, I don't go to clubs anymore. Um, like after I get got saved, I was still going to clubs all the time. And like I didn't see anything wrong with that. Like 
like newly saved Amanda didn't see anything wrong with me going to clubs. I was like, well, I'm just going there. I'm just dancing. You know, sometimes like I pop, like I, I don't think I would drink, but I had another believer at my job and she was like, Amanda, like I used to be a DJ at a club and it's not good. Like I was saved from that stuff and you don't want to do that. Like you don't want to be in that area. And I didn't listen. <laughs> Um, but I do appreciate her telling me those things because it took me a long, long time and I was hanging out with the wrong people as well. Like, this is why the Bible says that bad character corrupts good morals and that is so true. I was hanging around with the wrong crowd. I would still go drinking and go to clubs, but um, it was not good. And it came to a point where, like, I would even go to a certain type of club and I, I'm, it's a certain club where, like, two of the same kind of people would meet there they were playing like music right when i was dancing and there was like um i guess they would like project the music video onto the uh whatever screen or wall that they had and then they suddenly were playing a music video i was dancing i was dancing and then i look and there's a pentagram and mind you i was newly saved so i was like wait a minute this is wrong and then for the rest of the night i was kind of like iffy about it but like, I kind of just like pushed it in the back of my mind. But now looking back, Satan was really trying to like have that kind of doorway in my life and continue to try to like pull me into sin. And of course, like I was being led by my own desires. It's not like I didn't have a desire to go. I wanted to go and I wanted to go out to drink and do what everybody else was doing. But you can't drink of the cup of demons and the cup of the Lord at the same time. You have to choose one. And I had to stop going to the clubs. I had to stop drinking because I knew that if I wanted to continue to serve the Lord, I had to stop doing those things. Like I could not continue to do those things and serve the Lord because the Lord was not happy with me. I want to like, like tell you guys, the Lord was not happy that I was doing those things. He was very upset. Like I said, he was patient, he was merciful, but he was upset with me and he did not want me to do that and he did not want me to continue in that and I had to repent of a lot of different things and also it came with a lot of consequences like me going to those clubs like I ended up with like I said in a bad place with a bunch of people I felt so alone because like unfortunately you know people of the world and people that you go to clubs with and and that you drink with they it's only it's a very superficial like friendship you're only the only thing that's really tying you together is drinking the only thing that's really tying you together is clubbing and that's why when i stopped going those friends were no longer my friends so yeah it's pretty sad but at the same time it's a good lesson learned and i hope that you guys will understand that too so don't do this don't go out to clubs and if you see another believer who's going out to clubs who's drinking and trying to party all the time you have to let them know that that's not okay don't worry like if they don't listen to you at first pray for them and god will handle the rest okay so uh the reason that i'm playing this so this is the same um, day and uh, modesty wasn't very much a thing for me um, right when I got saved and of course like everything like like I said it was a progression that God helped me out through and through uh, but I just look back and I was like yeah I just wore like whatever I didn't think about how it would affect others how it would affect me and how I, I would want people to perceive me so you know I was very much caught in lust and wanted people to like me wanted people to like my body wanted people to like my physique and my like facial features but I recognize now being a believer that your value especially as a woman but of course like you know if this applies to you as well for a man like your value is not found in how you look is not found in your body because your body although yes god made it it is beautiful isn't found in that because he says that do not focus on outward adornment but the gentle but the inner beauty it comes from a gentle and quiet spirit and that is very precious to god like think about the words that god is using very precious like god cares about your character he cares about what you do and especially he cares about you doing his will and making sure that you're walking right and trying to be holy 
because he is holy. And also, you don't want to wear that because you don't want to put your value in your body. You want to put the value in the good works that you do for God. So yeah, uh, yeah, modesty very much not a thing. And obviously, I don't bump and grind uh, anymore. That's not how I dance anymore. <laughs> That's not how I dance anymore. But yeah, um, that was very much a side of me that is gone. Um, she's dead. I don't like to go to clubs anymore. I don't like to drink anymore. Like if I go out with like friends or even family members, um, like I won't drink. I might have like a sip and I'm talking like literally like a sip of alcohol if I'm here at home with Brian. Um, and that's because like I told myself I don't want to drink with other people anymore. But like I've taken like sips of wine for communion, let's say. I do not drink to get drunk anymore. And if I feel convicted about drinking, I will not drink. And that really goes to show that like <laughs> I had no self-control back in the day because back in the day I would just drink until I was incapacitated. And like I said, I would drink till I was incapacitated. So let me show you these other clips where I was just like that. I, wow, I don't even know what to say, but like I said, modesty wasn't a thing. And also I clearly was like, I was not fully there. And I just acted like a fool, guys. Like I was just a fool and not like a fool, like in a funny way, like haha, like you're acting. No, like it was not funny. <laughs> like I'm laughing because I'm laughing because I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm not because I'm nervous because but like it is kind of like embarrassing and cringy and stuff But like that's how it is like that's how but like that's how bad it is Especially when you're drunk and stuff like you do so many embarrassing things so many embarrassing things and This is just one of them and this is like the benign stuff guys like I don't think I have some of like the the really bad stuff on camera, which I kind of appreciate because I think I would actually expose myself. <laughs> I haven't actually exposed myself to you guys just to show you how bad it is, but just give an idea like this is one of them and ugh, don't don't be doing this stuff. Are you crazy? Is that what you do? I just do it to create like whiskey, but thanks to break up the Yeah. <laughs> so I used to swear a lot, um, like I would cuss like a sailor, like a, like a sailor. And also, I used to be very rude and mean and like obviously I'm not perfect now, like I still have my ups and downs, but like God definitely has been working on my life and like I've been trying my hardest to get better at being kind and nice to people and especially to those whom I love like this is Brian talking and we're married at this time yeah we're married at this time and like I just was so rude and so mean so like not submissive as a wife like I like everything that the Bible talks about I was the opposite of um, you know, in terms of like God and his commandments and everything. So yeah, it took a while, like especially with cussing, um, it took a while for me to stop, but I eventually did. Um, every time like I did, God would convict me. No, that's not okay. And I would repent and I wouldn't do it. And eventually I stopped and I don't do it anymore. Like me watching this video and me cussing, I'm like, who are you? Like, I don't do that anymore. And I bet you if I show Brian this video, he's gonna be like, I can't believe you used to do that. But like, I used to do that all the time, guys. I used to cuss all the time. And I used to be so mean and so rude all the time. Like sometimes still like I can be a bit abrasive and I know and God's still working on that. Like, like I said, I keep telling you guys, I'm not perfect by any means, but God continuously works on you. And as long as you abide in the vine, you know, Jesus is the vine. And we are the branches. Let me see. Let me pull up the scripture. Uh, this is John 15. And it says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. 
No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. This is like the perfect verse for this, guys, because if I didn't have Jesus in my life, I would have continued in my sins. I would have continued in my sins. But since I abided in Jesus and through the work of the Holy Spirit, and I cannot thank God enough for this, because the Holy Spirit would convict me, because the, God would lead me in a different direction than from like what my other friends were doing and from what like the world wanted me to do, I stopped doing those things and I turned my life around for, for Christ. I turned my life around for God. I want to say that because if I didn't abide in Christ, if I didn't abide in Jesus, if Jesus wasn't my vine, I would still be doing the stuff that I'm, I was doing. And I say this because a lot of the people that I used to hang out with are probably doing the same stuff that I was doing till this day. And it's, it's hard because I know that that stuff is leaving them empty, but they can't understand why that stuff is leaving them empty because they don't see that God is the only thing that can fulfill them. And that's the thing. God is the only one that can fulfill you. God is the only one that can get you out of whatever darkness that you've put yourself into. But it takes, number one, you believing in Jesus Christ. It says in Romans 10 verse 9, what is it? Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. And it also says <clears throat> to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. So for those of you, by the way, who are going to judge me and say that like, oh, like you had just gotten saved or whatever, and you were doing all this stuff, like some of the times, like I just didn't know what I was doing was wrong or other times it just took me a while for me to like understand that God didn't want me to do those things. So before you judge, please, 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 like, please like show some love first and um, just realize that I was definitely learning and it took some time not condoning any of my actions because all of them were wrong but I'm just saying that uh, God did have some patience with me and all of these things that I did left me empty and it was not worth it I look back and it was not worth doing any of this stuff guys, editing Amanda here I don't know where the outro went for this video but I'm gonna make one really quick for you guys so I hope this video blesses you I hope that now you're encouraged to let go of all of these worldly desires and seek God with all your heart, abide in the vine, and let me know, comment down below, anything that God has set you free from, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys have a wonderful week, God bless you, bye!